Greetings, this is the Pan-African show on Arts TV called Africa with your host, Kazalor Ksefu. Thank you for tuning in. And we would like to welcome all Ethiopians that are celebrating their new year. Happy New Year. Today we have a legend in our studio and I'm going to give him a chance to introduce himself. Welcome. Thank you so much. Thank you for the invitation. Thank you. Could you please introduce yourself? To those that don't know um, you. <laughs> a, a musician, a music composer, a arranger, and a performer, a lecturer, and a researcher, yeah. Dr. Mulatu Asad. A pleasure having you in our studio today. Thank you so much. When was your first exposure to music? Did you always want to be a musician? It's a long story, you know. Um, when I was a kid, um, I was really good on physics, uh, chemistry, and maths. So I always really loved to be aeronautical engineering or something to do with a plane. Anyway, that was all my dream. But uh, I went to this uh, very interesting high school. Because Europeans usually they said, how do we create a person? That's their first question. And you create a person from kindergarten of the 12th grade. That's where you can create a person. Anyway, I was so lucky I went to one of the schools uh, usually concentrated so much on how to develop a person. So I was studying, giving us everything what uh, a person should need to become somebody anyway. So every, I remember like every, uh, from Monday to Friday, whatever we do in the class on Saturday morning, all the professors, the teachers have a meeting about each one of us. This is to find out our talent, to find out about what to do and where to go. So um, I remember like when, when I finished, they say to me, Mulatu, but you know, they give us music, dance, and theater, everything also, everything what you know, a person needs, they give us. So I remember uh, when I finished, they said, um, Mulatu, I think if you become a musician, you'll be successful. That's how their assessment about me and whatever. So, you know, uh, I went to, to music line, I went to Trinity College in, in London, studying classical, all that kind of music in London. And uh, that's how my musical life started. Beautiful. Before we, we go any further, recently you were awarded by, the, yeah. by France's cultural minister. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You were bestowed the Order of Arts and Letters. Yeah, it was... Um, very interesting, you know, like uh, I played at the, the Paris Opera House, I played all top places in, in France actually. And audience are so great, so interesting. And also they have a very high respect for African culture and music in France. So uh, this is what I learned, this is what I found about it because, uh, you know, Africa has contributed so much for culture development in the world. But I always believe uh, they're not given the credit what they should get the African, because I always believe and a very high respect for the Bush people, because they gave us, they created all kind of things. Like, I can tell you here, like you come to Ethiopia, if I ask you who created the Masinko, cannot reply this. Mm. This one, but the guy who created the machine to me is the guy who created the cello because I have the same sounds, cello and the machine <laughs> to develop it, you can do whatever you do on the piano, you can play in cello. But in machine course, you are limited to four modes and five notes. That's the difference. But anyway, I really respect uh, for the French of giving me that award. 
which I think is uh, not only for Mulat, but it is a respect for Africa. Your music is, is extremely global, while being also local. Did you grow up listening to international music? Well, you know, um, as I told you, when I was uh, more young, I was uh, in England. I wasn't listening too much to, to our music, too much. Because, uh, you know, in high school, we listened to different kinds of music, the world music, you know, we listened to French, Italian, uh, British, and African. And we listened to all kinds of music, you know, all kinds of things. But uh, as I told you, my interest was not that. My interest was to become an engineer. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. So music. <laughs> yeah, not in music. Not that in comes music. afterwards. Okay, yeah. okay. Who were your favorite musician as a young man? In, in the world, in you? the world, yeah, because we all yeah. have our favorites. My favorite musicians are the Bush people, because they created us. They create all kind. Like I told you now, take the Masinko, the scientist. To me, is the same level like who created the piano, who created the guitar, who created the saxo, but we never give him that I respect as a scientist. We surely think we should learn to respect that people, that man, those people. So my greatest people, my heroes are the people from the bush. Because you can see the dances, how the, all this, the modern dance you see in the world, which is created, comes out from these bush people. The musical instruments come out from these bush people. So I have a, a very, a very high respect to the bush people. I can tell you a big story, like I involved myself in the, the science of jazz. Mm -hmm. Now, you take the tribe, the Drashis tribes. If you take the tribe, the Drashis, now, they are out of Ethiopian modes. <laughs> like, whatever, like, I think, I always had a program at the, in London, last time I remember, I had a beautiful program called Ethiopian Contribution to the Science of Jazz, featuring the Delashi's music. Because if you go back to like Charlie Parker, Miles Davis, all those great uh, jazz musicians. Uh, we were like improvising, you're doing something, you are doing, you have two diminished skills used for that science. So um, the Rashi plays one of that notes. But where they got it, how they got it, where it comes, God knows, because we don't do a lot of research, but to me, uh, for example, like while improvising, we go very, 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 those are the dimensions scale I'm talking about. So the Delashe Jews, a very interesting one of that diminished scale. They are out of Ethiopian moss. So they are one of the greatest scientists, and I think they're one of the greatest. Now, wait, we talk about Charlie Parker, we talk about Mike Davis, but, but, but the thing is, like, might take time, but really say, who is first to use these modes? Is it Charles Parker, blah, blah, blah. But I was asking my, uh, my professor at Berkeley. I was there at Berkeley now. So I made him listen to what I have done with the Darashis. So I asked him, when I was here at Berkeley, he was teaching me how Charlie Parker, and Miles Davis, he did all these diminished skills. But my question was, who were first? Mm -hmm. Was Charlie Parker or this tribe? So we need to work. We need to, we find need to really <laughs> very hard to find out about this great scientist, the Darashis, to me. Only because we've never done research on it, right? Well, I've done quite a lot. You yeah. have? Yeah, because in London, I, I told you, I had a, uh, there is a band called the Hackney Band. It was on BBC. Mulatu with the Hackney Band. I did a program called Ethiopian Contribution to the Science of Jazz, the Darashes. What was the concert about? Very interesting, a beautiful concert. So that shows 
our contribution to the world and shows what the Derashis has contributed to the science of jazz. And they are Ethiopians. So this is our contribution to jazz. Beautiful. <laughs> <laughs>So I want to ask you about your experience in Sao Paulo. My experience? Yes. In Sao Paulo. Well, Crayolo, you know, is uh, Malcolm Jackson of Brazil. Okay. He's a great musician and he's got really great respect and love to my music and to me. And uh, it was so nice, I really enjoyed playing with the group and them in Sao Paulo. But the thing is what my experience was, uh, you know, uh, we have a lot of connection culturally with the Southern America. Like you can take uh, like this, the drashes, the dances, or the musical instruments and everything. I think the source is Africa. So I think this is, was my experience. This is what really connects us with Brazil, mm -hmm. with most of Latin American musicians, Cuba. All these are connected to Africa. Right. So what really interested me was uh, uh, to really talk and make research about the connection between Southern Af uh, America and Africa. Mm -hmm. To me, what I think is it's all great African contribution to those regions. And I was doing quite a lot of research about this. But uh, with Criollo, what we've done was uh, Ethiopia. That was a fusion we did with him. I did a really great musician, great experience. And uh, you know what Ethiopia jazz is all about now? It is so big, so famous in the world. Like I was playing, in, remember, in Tokyo, in Japan. There were 120,000 people. Maybe you know this is called the Fuji Festival. I was one of the featured that we were 120,000 people. And I remember once what really connects us is the modes also. Now I said, let's play Yakarmoso. I started playing Yakarmoso because of the modes. They loved it and they went really, very uh, excited about the modes and the music. And this showed the connection between Japan, Ethiopian, you know, the five modes and the, you know, whatever, the five scales, the four modes connection. But that's what showed it. So all those people were standing and they asked me to play it again. <laughs> For 120,000 people, that shows really we have the most connection between Ethiopia and the, the Asian countries throughout this mode. You're asking me my experience in Brazil. The same, again, African contribution. The dances, the music, everything very African, but only the language. But I'd always say Africa is the greatest. I contribute so much, so great to the world of musical development. Very high respect. And that comes through our, what you call the Bush people, who created, who gave us the machine code, the crowd, the washing, you go to the southern Ethiopia, uh, you know, the Russian, everything. So those are what they've given us, what they have contributed. And then after that, it passes to the other part of the world also. But the thing which I really feel sorry always about it, we have never given respect that should be respected as any composers in the world. We should learn to do that, I think. Was your family supportive when you decided to go into music? Well, you know, uh, music has never been respected in the third country, in Ethiopia or whatever, you know. Because you always take music at the waste time to enjoy, probably to dance or whatever. Uh, 
So, you know, I had a big problem with my family. Because I said, first I was telling them I want to be an engineer. Then after I went there, I changed my mind, I want to become a musician. So they never accepted this. I had a lot of problems to understand, to explain what music, science is all about. But finally, they agreed. So I continued, I studied at Trinity in London. That's how I came to music. <laughs> Could you walk us through your musical education experience before you returned to Ethiopia? Like you went to Trinity and then from Trinity you went to Berkeley? Yeah, uh, from Trinity, um, when I was in London, like I, I, Trinity actually, uh, I had some really African musicians friendly in London. And, uh, We've been discussing about this, what I've talked about, contribution and everything. And uh, so then I said, I, I decided, uh, why don't uh, I go to the science of jazz, study myself to the science of jazz. And then the best institution, the best place in the world is Berkeley for this. Then I took the entrance, then I passed it. Then I become the first African in 1958 to enroll at Berkeley. Wow. And also I'm the first to uh, receive the doctorate from Berkeley, the first African. For his unique contributions in creating the Ethio jazz style and his enduring international influence, I'm pleased to present Malatu Astatke with Berkeley's Honorary Doctor of Music degree. So the experience at Berkeley was really very interesting, very nice. And uh, because I remember that like, we do a lot of, uh, in the classroom, they used to give us uh, assignment to do like research about Duke Ellington, about Charlie Parker, about, you know, assignment research. And so um, I always say, how did these people become great? How did they become recognized in the world? So I start thinking at Berkeley how to become, to be recognized, how to become myself, mulatto. Then I'm thinking of, uh, and then if you jazz comes to my mind. That's how I start playing around with Ethiopian different modes. Uh, try to visit with jazz and things like that. But um, so interesting. Then I lived to New York after Berkeley. Uh, I did my first Ethio jazz in 19, uh, in the 60s or something. About 50, 40 years ago, 50 years ago, I started my first album on Ethio jazz. So this Ethio jazz. Uh, become so very interesting science because what I did was to put the four Ethiopian modes and show it is the ambassador but in the bottom so it always become Ethiopian the root will be Ethiopian so I developed the world on top of that <laughs> and that fusion is not easy really because there is harmony structure they are voicing yeah, the feel which you have to really be careful so it doesn't go direct to the jazz or go to somewhere else. So it has to have that the Ethiopian character, the Ethiopian sounds. And that's how I created Ethiopian jazz. Then the first album I made in New York became so successful, so beautiful. And that's how 
the theater has started. Then now it's so big in the world, you know, the, the audience 120,000. I play all over in the world, you know. Now, about two weeks ago, I was in Morocco, Casablanca, a beautiful concert. I was in Madrid, I was in Barcelona, I was all over, beautiful concert, very successful. So this is how Ethiopia Jazz is in the world now. It's so famous, so big. Also, like I had a chance to play Ethiopia Jazz with the greatest, with Duke Allington. Mm. They played one of my compositions, which really loved it, really interesting. And I remember what Duke says to me, I've never expected this from an African. Oh, he and said that? That's what he said. I mean, isn't he an African? <laughs> yeah, I mean, the science. Oh, the okay, fusion, okay. The jazz. Ah, the, the, the yeah, two. because, you know, they play straight jazz, and when they see these fusions, the five notes, the fusion, yeah. the 12 rock, he found it's it new. very interesting. Yeah. He said, he never expected it from Africa, because it's a great, beautiful fusion, yeah. Ethiopia. jazz. And really, a great, great respect, which I'll never forget from Duke. Yeah. I thank him so much. That's beautiful. <laughs> you know, it's so interesting that you brought him up. I did have a question about yeah. Duke Ellington, because it does talk that you actually had a moment with him. And I'm glad you brought him up before yeah. I asked the question. Thank you, thank you, thank you. <laughs> How and where did your exposure to jazz Afro-Latin and funk music begin? Well, as I said to you, you take Afro-Latin. Mm -hmm. Now, because I always believe all this, the Afro beats, everything is African credit, mm -hmm. which the greatest creators, which I told you about, the Bush people. Okay. Now, you can take the Latin, now, they have this thing they call Montuno. They have the same kind of thing in Zaire. Now, which is first? You don't know. So, um, always you have a good connection with the, with the Latin music, you know, African connection, all this. So, how do I come into Latin music? Because uh, it's not only, you see, how, how do you research music? This is the question. You can you don't only do listen to melodies. You research music about the rhythmic side, the harmonic structures, the voicings, the counterpoints, and then that's how you do a research about music. That's how you analyze music. Now to my music, to Ethio Jazz, like it's now it's different. When I was in New York, I was doing this Montuno, but to do a Montuno on a five notes was not easy. Mm -hmm. To get that feel, that more, to do it on a five more was so difficult. That's another beautiful creation. To do a Montuno on the five notes, that was another contribution. Mm -hmm. But also the Montuno brings up Africa, it show you Africa, the contributions of Africa. So what I did was Ethiopia jazz and the Montunos, the jazz was all put together, other up to Ethiopia. That was the science of it. And still we listen to Ethiopia jazz because I have the four modes on the bottom always. It's always Ethiopia. Wow, beautiful. Was it an easy decision to return to Ethiopia? Were you gigging and making money in the U.S. at the time, before you came to Ethiopia? In America? Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I was playing in different places in New York. I was playing in uh, D.C. I was playing in uh, Boston areas. I was playing in a lot of different mm -hmm. places, yeah. And also, I played in England before I go to America also, music. Okay. Maybe, you know, Edmond Ross, you heard of Edmond Ross? I played with Edmond Ross in London. Wow. And Edmond Ross had one of the most beautiful clubs at Regent Street in London. So I played with him also. So I played well like top, uh, top musician, top people in the world. And I had the chance to play with him. But uh, if you just, was not really very much introduced at that time. Okay. 
but it was after I left for America, after I come out of these albums, LPs, blah, then become big. Okay. So when you decided to come back home, yeah. was it an easy decision or did you have to really like think about it or you just got up and came? Well, you know, I mean, the whole purpose, the whole aim, me of going there studying music and art is to come and introduce in my country and also to upgrade Ethiopian music, to upgrade our music, our art, our culture and give it to the world so they can appreciate. Well, that was the whole idea. So when I come back, I try to introduce Ethiopian jazz, introduce jazz music. I tell you, he said, they've told me to get off from the stage. There was a big show. They had a program called Days of Melodies. And if you remember, maybe, you know, the Tagai Gabriel Madin's play, Petros Yachinsai? Yes. I did the music. Me and Tagai, we did the Petros Yachinsai. It was so interesting. So those people, and, uh, and I had Raunga Sisters, Kuluman Coalition. That was a hit in Ethiopia. So they came and said to me, Mulatu, you play Kuluman College. No, I said, no, I don't play. See, I have a composition, Petro Siachisa, I'm playing Petro Siachisa. <laughs> and the Bagana player, Machinko, all fish. I said, this one I'm going to add, Peter Kenneth Kavaro. They said, no, I want you to play Kuluman College. I said, no, I don't. So finally they said, okay, do what you want. So, so I remember I sat uh, Petros Yachinsa. So I had a Bagana player, I had this, you know, packed place that ambassador was packed. Then we started playing Bagana, Demse Bagana, you know, the, he was at the best. And then suddenly he played and then I started improvising. They say, they shouted, they say, get off. They get off the stage. They wanted to die, get off, <laughs> they don't understand. <laughs> they don't understand it. So I went through all these problems. I've been told to get off. But after 50 years of this traveling all over, putting Ethiopia jazz after the world now, they say, let's listen more. They don't say, get off. <laughs> they say, come back. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I mean, it's not easy. I mean, like, we went through a lot of things. I, I, I think, you know, like, I could have stopped music when they say, told me, like, get off from the stage, like, shouting to me like that. I could have get demoralized. I could have said, no more music. Mm. But I say, no way. I'll show them, I'll fight them back. I fight, I fight. I'll, here, Here I am. Now. <laughs> Here you are. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, was your country, Ethiopia, receptive to your unique recording sounds when you first arrived? Well, no, you kind of said you know, it now. Because, you know, like I came, I did Kuluman College when people went go crazy. It was so accepted. So, we have choices of what we like and what we don't like, yeah. obviously. Yeah, you know. Well, I mean, uh, the thing was what I was trying to win out with strong mm. As I said to you, how do you analyze? It's not only the Kuluman College. Mm. What I had in behind, what I was doing, the code changes, the voicings, and the baseline. Mm. That baseline is the one who clearly uh, changed the chick chick rhythm, the feel. Mm. That line, long time ago. So they loved it. It was so interesting and you know, very accepted and uh, I think it was so beautiful. So now I'm going to take you back to when you first arrived in Ethiopia. Yeah. When you first arrived, how was the music scene here? Well, you know, uh, there were uh, great musicians, great group, like Korzabanya, you take the Polish, they even have a symphony, the, the Polish Symphony yeah. Orchestra. It was like uh, the National Theatre, the Royal Theatre, uh, musicians, like uh, the saxophone player, Kitachomokra, Mara Visito at the National Theatre. You see, 
and uh, nurses was around. Nurses was doing most of the arrangements, most of the being nurses and everybody. Yes. But you see, the idealization, how is their music and Ethio jazz, if you analyze the two differences, two different music. Mm. So what they were doing is before I came, is like more what you call the canon forms. Like they were very, 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 this what you call a canon form. There was not really very much sophisticated, the harmonics, the improvisations, the voicing, not that much into it. But still have a very high, a great respect for those people who are trying to improve Ethiopian music. And the saxophone players, those are the starting, this is how he started. So, you know, I have really great respect for those people, like I tell you, the Courts of India, the Dorsai, the, the National Theatre, and also our cultural musicians also. Very high respect for those people. Now when Ethiopia jazz comes, entirely a different music, a different approach, a different style, a friend, you know, way. So um, what I was listening when I arrived was those musicians from Kudanya, Dorsai, Kudanya, Pula. And now Ethiopia jazz, different type of music, different approach, different whatever. So I tell you, I have a high, a big respect for those people who were doing music at that time. Like Kurzawenya, the Polish, you know, like we had the symphony, Polish symphony orchestra. It was not easy. Great musicians. Yeah. Did you play with any of them? When you first oh, arrived, or did with, you form uh, your own band? Yeah, I played with Getacho, we cry yeah. a lot, we did a lot of folks together. And uh, I remember there was a Ras band, Tafarra. We played, uh, we played with Tafarra quite a lot, very interesting. And, well, musicians like, uh, all musicians like Grima Bayene group, uh, we played Pipisha. And with all the... Are some, they part of the Ras band? Or are they Solekos? So because you no, had two... Solekos and Ras band was, Ras band was different. Solekos was a different band, a different band. Okay. But uh, I never really had a chance playing with, uh, you know, with Solekos, mm -hmm. those people. But uh, I had my own way of musicians, created by musicians. Like as I told you, like uh, the Bibisha did like Ethio Stars, created a group called Ethio Stars, which selected musicians from different bands and we formed a group. So that's what uh, we've been doing actually. Did you also study ethnomusicology in school? How did such a strong ethnomusicology interest develop in a city? Well, I, did. I was at Harvard. Okay. I was at Harvard. I did a lot of research at Harvard. Um, and also I was at MIT as well. So at Harvard, I was uh, doing a research on Makwamia. Oh. That was what I've been doing, which is so interesting. Like, you go to four centuries, I think, we used to conduct music with Mekwamara before symphony orchestra was created. So if you see most of the movements of the Mekwamara movement, like if you see military march band going in front, yeah. like if you see the ladies who we conducts see. the band, from six to 70% of that movement is found in Mekwamara. And you go to Harvard, you go to Yale, or go to Princeton. If you major in conducting, the first thing you study is this, this, this. Mm. So my research was conducting is Ethiopian contribution to the world. That's what I did in Harvard. It was so interesting. Now, I tell you, you can take the cover or not. It's not a rhythm keeping, it's a melody by itself. If I don't know the chanting, I don't know where to come in. 
that shows you the cover the church is great great science it's a melody by itself so I've been those kind of a lot of research at Harvard in the, the, the McCormick it was so interesting you know. so what did you do at MIT that was another interesting one I had a program called bringing the Asmaris to the 21st century okay <laughs> so I went to MIT so I want you to change the life of the Asmaris that was a very interesting program, and uh, it's like the Masinko, the Russian, the cloud. So I always believe our greatest cultural musician players, I feel always they are in prison. They can only play four notes and the five notes. They can't go nowhere. So they are in prison, they start. They cannot play. That's why I went to MIT. I want to improvise, I want to upgrade these instruments. Right. So I went to MIT, I was trying to compre, you know, computerize these instruments. So in Magico, you can play like cello or whatever. You play washing, you know, you can computerize everything. So that's what I was doing in MIT. Very interesting, bringing the Asmaris to the 21st century. That was the program. So was it successful? Are we able well, to bring them into Yeah, yeah, we did halfway what, what happened was, the grand finish before I So I said, I said no, 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 Mulatu, you take you another six months of a month, it must to extend the grant. So I had a concert in uh, Germany, in Italy, blah. So I said, I'll come back, I left. So it's still open for it's me. It's open for you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's my next project oh. is what I told you, all these greatest people in the bush, my heroes. I want them to be up to that standard, to be able to play whatever you play on a saxophone, whatever you play on the piano, whatever. I want those people to be able to play on their instruments. So that's what I'm struggling and working on now. Whenever you go abroad, whenever you go play in all these different uh, countries, there are always bands there that you actually are able to play with. Apparently, there's over 88 bands that play Ethio jazz around the world. Yeah. I'm going to make a city called Children's of Ethio Jazz. This is what we work on. The guys from uh, Paris, there are so many. America, there are so many. Australia, there are so many. In Germany, that all over Ethiopia is so big all over the world. I know. I, so now I'm making a CD called "Children's of, of Ethiopia. Ethiopia." So, did you ever own, did you ever have your own band in Ethiopia? Once yeah, Ethiopia Stars. Ethiopia Stars were your band. Yeah, you okay. know, with Bibisha and all yeah. these people. Yeah, yeah, Ethiopia Stars. Okay. Yeah. So, did you ever get a chance to perform for the Emperor Haile Selassie? Oh yeah, I did. Yeah. You know, at the Gion Hotel. He came at the Gion. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Where she always comes to Gion. <laughs> I remember there's a back door, right? To, to come into from the uh, palace. From the palace. He, he, always like four o'clock or something like that. He, he takes a walk. He had these big Australian horses at the back. So he go and feed him sugar always at four o'clock. So I had uh, 25 gambelans. I brought some gambelans from 25. If you remember the Chobi Checkers, this dance, Chobi Checker. Okay. That's a gambelans dance. Chobi Checker. You know the American Chobi Checker? Oh, okay, okay, okay. Uh, I just want to prove, to yes. show where they got it from. Okay, okay. Anyway, I managed, but uh, uh, there was this uh, head of the had a Slati Foundation, so you know, I, I talked to him somehow, and uh, he was laughing because I asked him if they can come to the club and see the Gambellans. You know, he was he was laughing, but finally he said, "Okay, just give me three, four days, then I'll come back to you." I think he talked to him. He said, "Okay, I'll come." That was so great. Yeah. 
So he came over to the club. I had this uh, very interesting uh, Gambela group I brought. And it was, I tell you, a beautiful, beautiful, interesting show. And uh, anyway, watched it, he loved it. And uh, it was uh, one of those beautiful experiences. But uh, I had a problem with the, with the Gambellans also because uh, Usually, I remember they came, uh, you know, the grasses are taking on the beautiful grass outside. So usually they call and, uh, you know, they don't wear a bra. Yeah. They were just sleeping on the bridge and what security people were so surprised. What's this? What no, why are they naked? <laughs> <laughs> well, anyway, I had a little problem. They said, like, if any of this Go into the stage without a bro. Say, let's put you in prison. <laughs> so we've been arguing, and it was so interesting. And uh, there's one question she asked me. It was so interesting question. And I went, uh, I was telling him, so I went to Mercato, I bought 10 bra. I came and asked him to put it on. I never forget, she asked me, she said, you see this? He said, yeah. Who are you? to cover my face, to cover my beauty. Oh. Cannot answer this question. Uh, no. He said, this is my beauty. You cannot, have not a right to cover my face, my beauty. I have no reply, I cannot reply. I don't <laughs> so I'm sorry, but please, please. You know, <laughs> but finally they said, okay. So I gave them, they put the problem, and they start playing. <laughs> very interesting, very interesting, yeah. <laughs> How did those amazing Addis Ababa recordings, because you've, you've done quite a few recordings here. Yeah, in Addis, right? yeah. In Addis, yeah. Addis yeah. yeah. How did those come about? How were you able to have those recordings done? Well, you know, Amaha, you know, there was another guy called Ali. Those people were, because the Gion, I mean, the club, is sound is so beautiful. Yes. Beautiful sound. So we use it as a studio also. So, you know, I was doing this Ethiopia, jazz, I was trying to develop music, you know, like Amaha and this, the Ali and those, they wanted to help, they want to develop together. So that's how recordings start coming up here. Yeah, yeah. Nice. Did you have a hard time playing what you loved during the Derg regime? No. Well, Ethio jazz. Just for instrumental, it's just instrumental, it's nothing, it's just science. It's science. <laughs> Nobody could get mad at anything. It's the science of sound, the sound of science. That's what Ethio Jazz is all about. Now I'm going to take you to Festac 77. You remember that event or celebration in Nigeria? Yes, yeah, in Nigeria, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Can you tell me your experience during that time? Well, it's so beautiful to see all those great Africans together in one stage. That's what I really loved and really enjoyed. And uh, we are a group, Ethiopian national group also, performed there. And I tell you, I mean, there were over like 10,000 artists from all over Africa. And if you see, they created a village called African Village in Nigeria. If you sit in the evening with all musicians playing in the different villages, but it's just a paradise. It's so beautiful. It's very hard to even imagine. I enjoyed it so much. It was so beautiful. Really enjoyed it. Festac 77, the second World Black and African Festival of Arts and Culture held in Nigeria, brought together 15,000 participants from over 70 countries. At the official opening ceremony in the Lagos National Stadium, contingents from 47 countries paraded before government officials, visiting heads of state, and a capacity crowd of 100,000. The first contingent was from Ethiopia, which is to host the next festival. I see Africa all together at once. I remember maybe Osibisa or those people, and I met Sanra. Sarah was also had a place where he practiced, so I go and listen to Sarah practicing. 
Sandra. Beauty. Sandra, you know Sandra. Yeah, yeah. So so beautiful. So um, I had a chance to go and listen to his rehearsal, listen to his music. And you see the whole Africa, and Sandra with jazz, and other African groups there, the dancing, and everything. It was, I don't know why really they don't keep continuing this festival. I wish they do. I you know, know. I, I wish they did too. You know what was interesting? Yeah. was after the Festac 77 in Nigeria, yeah. the next one, or the following year, was supposed to be in Ethiopia. Oh. But the, uh, the whole world changed yeah, after changed. that. Yeah. <laughs> but I wish, so I wish we never did. Yeah. Wish in the future to think about this. And I, I am thinking about it. I want to do a festac in Ethiopia. You should do that. Yeah, I'm trying. Really, it will be so so interesting. Yeah, so interesting. We need yeah. to come together again in one. Yeah, 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 yeah. We should, we should, uh, should do that. I think. Yeah. I think. So your other wonderful experience is people to people. Yeah. That's great. Yeah, did? We've been all over the world. Yes. Yeah, so we've been all over the world. When was that? Well, how was, and I guess you can also tell us the experience that you had, the good, the bad. No, no, I mean, you know, I mean, uh, it was so nice, like, to show the world around Ethiopian culture and music. That was a beautiful, a great experience. Traveled all over. We played all over the world. You know, we played in uh, we played in Mexico. We played in Cuba. We played all over. You know, that was we traveled so all over the place. That was so beautiful. Yeah, yeah. That was uh, people to people was very, very, very interesting. So, Broken Flowers is a movie that has taken your music. Yeah. And it's a Hollywood film. Yes. With uh, Sharon and Stone, Bill yes. Mary, and this. It was so interesting. Um, I remember I had a, a beautiful concert in New York. Jim Jamosh, that's the man. Okay. He's the Hollywood man. He had produced so many films. So he came to my concert. He said, No, somebody called me in my hotel in New York. They called me, uh, You want to come over to your concert tonight? And he said, this is Jim Jamosh. So he said, do you want to come over to talk to you? I said, OK. I can't wait for you. Come over. He said, we'll come back, stay in Brother. He said, I'll come over with all my clothes. I said, OK. So they came to my dressing room. I said, this is Jim. So he said, Murato, I have a big admiration for you. I like your music. I like your art, your whatever you do. And uh, I'm here also to enjoy your concert in New York now. It's so beautiful. So he said, I have something in mind. I said, what? He said, uh, I'm making a film. So I want to use your compositions in my film. And he said, it's a Hollywood film. I said, OK. He said, there's no problem. You just let me know which uh, composition that is. You just email me and let me know. So I agree. And then uh, what it was uh, makes it so interesting was uh, film came out and uh, we won a Academy Award at the Cannes Film Festival also, which is so beautiful. So um, what really made it interesting was, you know, I had a lot of audience in New York, in London, a lot of audience, a lot of people coming to my concert and everything. But went back to New York, all film goers, top film people start coming to my concert. Ah, I'll tell you, you know, that. I have two <laughs> great audiences, the film goers exactly. and the jazz lovers. <laughs> so my audience just doubled up exactly. all over the world you now. <laughs> it's called Broken Flowers, they love it. And, you know, a lot of audience, film calls start coming, they start enjoying my music. And that's it how opened it was. A, another door. I tell you, it was so great, you know. I call out James, I said, thank you, James. 
And I go to the film goes coming to my concert now. I say, great, <laughs> beautiful. So now I'm going to bring you to the Ethiopic. Ah. Do you appreciate the Ethiopic release of your music? Did you approve of it? And did you get your royalties? Well, but the whole thing of Ethiopic is like, you know, I mean, uh, all my aim, all my love, my understanding is to promote Ethiopia to the world, our culture, you know, and uh, you not know, really to make that much money of it. And it was good, so Ethiopic came out, the Turkish all over the world, it's been out all over the world. And, uh, but as I told you before, Ethiopic, Ethio jazz was introduced to the world with the records in New York before the Ethiopic produced. Mm -hmm. Yes. Ethio jazz was produced before Ethiopic in the world, in America. So Ethio jazz, I mean, Ethiopic came afterwards. Now, you know, but it's okay. So this being New Year. Yeah. Uh, it's Ethiopian New Year. We're getting into 2015. Any advices, the young generation, the young population that we have that is going? Because now, even in Addis, we have a lot of bands that are uh, being formed on Ethio Jazz. So any advice for the young generation? I always say, um, remember I was telling you about the contribution, the great contribution of the Bush people. Mm -hmm. So I always say, please respect those people because those are the ones who created us. So if you have more respect to them, the music will be progressing and Ethiopian contribution to the world also be known to the world. So to the youngster, I say, please, try to promote Ethiopian culture, music and art, and also give a great respect for our creators. I can give you the question, who created the Masinko? Who created the Skista? We should be able to say, name the names of those people who created this. Now, uh, really sorry, take the Skista. I had the chance to play with them. Uh, Beyonce's sister at Victoria Park in London. So um, we're going to the dressing room. Now ask her, but now Skista is known by Beyonce. But this Skista created, came up from Ethiopia. Right. Who created, who is this little, who is she? Mm -hmm. Nobody knows. So to these youngsters, please look for those great, intelligent, creative artists and give them respect. This is what I advise for the youngsters. Create a beautiful musical instruments. Please give a respect to them. Give a high moral respect than most to the European musicians and to the European art and music because they take it from us, they develop it. Mm. I tell you now, if you take Washington, flute, if you take the cello, the masingo, so this is how it develops. So give a respect, most youngsters should give a respect to those people, which we call Bush people. They're not the Bush people, they are the greatest scientists to me, respect them. That's my message. Beautiful. So <laughs> going into the new year, we are telling all our music lovers, music admirers, music players to have respect. Yeah, that's what it is. <laughs> Thank you very much, everybody, and happy new year. Thanks for tuning in to Africa. This is your host, Kazalor Seifu. With Thank you again for coming. Thank you again. Thursday. Thank you for your time. I thank you so much. Thank you. We hope we meet again. Yes, we will. Yeah. <laughs> Happy New Year. Have a Happy prosperous New Year, yes. Happy New Year. Happy, Happy New, New Year. Year.